Oris is the name of a creek next to Holstein. Since 1904, Oris watches have been produced in Holstein, a village in the Swiss Jura Mountains. Oris, a journey through time. Since 1904, Oris has been making mechanical watches without interruption. The watches produced in Holstein have been sold all over the world for more than a century. Today, Oris is one of a few watch companies that is still independent and privately owned. In the world of mechanical Hello everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today for the first ever Oris webinar hosted by Hyde Park Jewelers. You can find us online at hydeparkjewelers.com. We just launched our new website where you can now browse Hyde Park selection of Oris pieces online. If you'd like more information on the pieces that you see today, please contact your sales professional at Hyde Park Jewelers in Cherry Creek Shopping Center in Denver, Colorado, or the Biltmore Fashion Park in Phoenix, Arizona. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Paul Riggs. I'm the founder of the Watch Enthusiast of Arizona Collectors Group. Of the many collectors joining us today, I'd like to give a special welcome to the members of the Watch Enthusiast of Arizona, as well as the Denver chapter of Red Bar. Thank you all for joining us. Today, we have the privilege of being joined by Mr. VJ Geronimo. He's the North American CEO of Boris Watches. Thank you, VJ, for joining us today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over the rules of this layout, uh, in the, the layout of this webinar. The webinar is planned for a maximum of one hour duration. This webinar is about Oris. They will be the focus today. That means we'll have no cross-brand comparisons. VJ will be giving about a 20-minute presentation, allowing you all an in-depth look at the unique timepieces of Oris. After the presentation, we're going to move on to a Q&A portion, where you will all have an opportunity to ask questions that I will relay to VJ to answer. If you scroll down, you'll find a section, a sec a section where you can submit your questions uh, for the Q&A, as well as a couple poll questions that we're going to have pop up throughout the webinar. If we run out of time and we're not able to get to everyone's questions today, you can submit the questions directly to me at prigs at hpjewels.com or refer to our re uh, newly redesigned website at hydeparkjewelers.com, where Oris's collection is available to explore from the comfort of your own home. But now it's time to get to what you've all been waiting for. BJ, please show us what you have for us today. Thank you, Paul. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having us here. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be here and show you kind of what Oris is about. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, perhaps um, we're one of the last mechanical, all mechanical brands, uh, Swiss, 100, over 115 years old. We stand for a number of different things our brand values, but we're one of the last independent brands in Switzerland. We only make mechanical watches, if those of you who saw the video. Um, and we've been making them without interruption in the same factory in Holstein, Switzerland uh, since 1904. Um, we have what we call six brand values, kind of what the brand is all about. Um, we're very proud of our heritage from Holstein. Um, the company was founded in that factory and it still exists there today. So we've had a we've had long experience making mechanical watches. Um, all we make are mechanical watches, as I said. Um, we're one of the we're one of the only if the only brand that could say we make mechanic only mechanical watches in our price point. 
So we've been making mechanical watches without interruption since 1904, the time we started. Um, all of our watches are Swiss made. So as you know, Swiss watches are the best watches in the world and the precision and the care it takes to make Swiss watches. Um, so we're, we're very proud of that heritage as well and, and Swiss. Um, our approach to things is very genuine as well. We, we are not about celebrity, we're not about bling. The company was founded on the premise of making a really strong, good watch for a reasonable price. And our approach to things is very much a common sense approach. It's what we do, it's how we go about things. Um, so when we talk about it, and it, it's very much product focus, and you know, we really, you know, is it easy to take a celebrity angle to things and and really use celebrities to to sell watches? Yes, it, it, it's an easy thing to do, but it's not something we believe in as a company. And um, kind of given that approach to things, we find that really kind of guides us in our principles and how we approach things. We can look at things with common sense, and um, we're also really serious about watchmaking. Uh, even though we're at a lower price point per se, our product is very strong and it's it's a serious, um, ma seriously made product. And um, we're also about very much innovation and invention. And even during the time, you know, we made our own movements for many years. Aura started in 1904. From 1904 to 1982, we made about 279 of our own calibers. So we were a very prominent manufacturer prominent um, million point two units a year in our, in our height of production. Um, and then in 1982 with the quartz crisis and all that happened there, we, we closed the production down and we like most bought our movements from, from Oshawa or from the Swatch group or ETA at the time. But even during the time when we were buying our own movements, when we were not making our own movements, we were you know innovating on top of things. We came out with a world timer um, our pointer mechanisms, different things like that. We always continue to innovate even um, to this day we've innovated and we'll see much of our innovation with regard. You'll see some of our own calibers later on down the way. Um, but probably the, the most important of our brand values is independence. Um, we are still an independent company. Uh, again, one of the last sort of mainstream independent manufacturers, uh, you know, now with the advent of micro brands and things, um, there's a lot of smaller independents, but we're kind of one of the last, uh, we're privately owned, family owned company, um, owner, owner run and still operated that way. And the sense of independence, it's not just a financial independence, which, which it is a financial independence, but it's an independent mindset. It's a matter of taking, being able to make things that make sense, being able to do things quickly and with common sense. And taking that, you know, doing things because we want to do them or the right thing to do, not necessarily, um, you know, we don't have to do the wrong things with our independence. We're not part of a group. We're not part of any, you know, we don't have any sort of board of directors over us saying, you know, you need to make shareholders happy and numbers and things like that. We, we have the luxury of, you know, being able to do things in a way that makes the most sense in a way that makes the brand uh, for the long term. It's a very long term approach to things. So that's, that's what we're about. Um, now, with regard to our product, many of you know our product. Uh, many of you have seen some of our styles. Um, I have some in front of me. I, I'm happy to, you know, I'd like to show you guys. Um, one of our best-selling pieces or our best-selling collections is our Aquas collection. That's our basic diver pieces. That's the three pieces you see to the, to the left side there. Um, the Aquas in, available in 36 millimeter. It's available in 39.5. 43.5 and then what I have for you today this is the this is the new Aquas 41 and a half millimeter for those of you who haven't seen it so um, it's a great size we feel that this size will be um, for those who thought the 43 was a little too big and the 39 a little too small we felt this size is right in the middle so we're looking forward to kind of bringing this out I'm not sure how many of you have seen it but I know um, it's available and it's a it's a great piece so um, that's the Aquas side of things. And then the other collections, which I'm sure you all know us for, um, is our Diver 65 collection. And, you know, I've been with Oris for 10 years, um, since 2010. And I would say the Diver 65, the introduction of the Diver 65 really in 2015 was a turning point for the brand in terms of our, you know, contemporary awareness and what have you. And I think a lot of people uh, very much 
kind of got to know Oris better because of the Diver 65. Um, I have a few pieces here to show you with regard to that. Um, this one is the recycled strap Diver 65. If you've seen this one, I just have a few in my in my at my hands here. So this one has the recycled ocean plastic strap, which you uh, you know, so the the yarn is made out of recycled ocean plastic, which we'll talk about a little more in terms of our initiatives. Um, this one should be near and dear to, to many people's hearts. This is the red bar, uh, limited edition. This is my personal one. So um, as you guys know, we made this we made this product um, a couple years back, and um, a major part of the proceeds of this watch went towards the charity. We gave a donation to the Red Bar Fund um, with regard to this watch. So this is this is another piece that's good. And then the other one I'm wearing is the Carbashir. This was the one in 2016, the bronze edition. If you guys have seen that, sorry for the glare there. Hope that better. So all bronze, you can see mine, um, I've had it. I haven't cleaned it since then in terms of the patina. And so you see that's the patina that, that comes onto it. It's a really nice, uh, nice looking piece. So as far as the icons of the collection, so you've seen Aquas, you've seen some Diver 65, Diving is our strongest selling family in, in North America. So, and then next, uh, one of the major introductions we had, or reintroductions, I should say, is the Big Crown pointer dates. So um, there's a few different versions there. The version I happen to have in my hand here, this is the Movember piece from a couple of years ago. So this is the Movember pointer date, but this product or version of this product has been, um, has been in our collection since 1938. So this really is an iconic piece. This is probably the most, I would say, iconic Oris piece um, over the history that we've had, that, that we've made. So this is a strong piece. We'll talk a little about, more about Movember later on, but the pointer dates, you guys have seen them, or maybe you haven't or have, but we've come out with a lot of different case material, like there's a full bronze version. Um, there's one with a bronze dial as well. Um, that's the one on the top there. Um, there, there's also a bronze case with a green dial with a mint green and a 36. There is a 40 millimeter with a hunter green dial. There's the red dials, the blue dials. So that collection has seen a lot of different um, iterations over time, but the, the latest versions of them are really nice and have been really well received and people really like the, the colors and, and that sort of thing. So that's good. Um, the next collection, which you also um, may have seen, are the Pro Pilots. So the Pro Pilot got a re relaunch, not a relaunch, but it got an update last uh, this year. So this happens to be the 41 millimeter Pro Pilot. So the numbers got a little bit different. The case got a little slimmer. The um, this is a ventile strap. So for those of you who know what the fabric ventile is. It was used, it was developed for the uh, the RAF during World War II uh, for its fighter pilots that it was, basically, it's basically a water resistant material um, and it's very light. So it was used by fighter pilots. So, um, because a lot of the planes had to be splashed into the ocean because they couldn't make it back. And the mortality rate among pilots was very, very high because of that, because it was freezing in the, in the uh, English channel. So they developed this fabric and the one company that makes it is in Switzerland. The one company in the world that still makes it is in Switzerland actually. So we, we used it in our aviation piece, um, the pro pilot, and then the clasp also is a new class. So it's a really nicely shaped. And then it has this really easy to use uh, buckle where you can just undo it and then it pops right out. So the old ones had sort of a fold over mechanism. These have a, a buckle me mechanism to them. So, they're very um, easy to use. So that's the, the Pro Pilot. So you guys have seen, um, this is the basic date. I also have in my co collection here, I have a um, Pro Pilot 111, which is our own caliber, which we'll, we'll talk more about. But um, that's one of our own as well. That's from the Pro Pilot collection. So, and then finally, another piece that we've, we're known for, um, you know, we make watches in multiple different worlds in terms of, diving, aviation, motorsport, and then culture or classic pieces, we call it. We've also been known for our jazz series of pizzas, which we've made for a long time. We've made about, I believe the number's 
19, 19 jazz edition watches over, over the period of time. So um, this is one of the latest ones. This is the Art Blakey. So Art Blakey was a jazz drummer. And I don't know if you can catch the detail of this watch from I'm showing it to you. But if you notice the top of it is like the top of a drum head, if you can see that well. So it's a very subtle when we do these sort of collaborations and we, we talk about this, we don't, we try not to make things that are so over the top that, you know, big Art Blakey autograph or something like that. We do things in a very subtle way and try to bring about the details that make the most sense and really pay homage to the artist. So the drum head is there and then there's a symbol on the back, like the, um, the gold of a symbol on the back of the limited edition piece. So this one's been really well received for us. So, so as far as, you know, as far as a rundown of the collection, that's kind of a, an overall, some pieces from each, from each spot. So um, we're going to talk more about some of the other pieces. We'll talk more about um, some of our own calibers. So uh, we can talk about that. So. Right. When we start, when we start signing, signing, first of all, first of all to see in our mind, our mind what's the goal, what's the, goal of the, of the design language. language. And here, obviously, here, obviously, the most really honest, really honest, the honest design, 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 design. If you think about the Orislav, it's really, it's really, really, it's really going, 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 going all way, all way. You just take your time and time and love. And love. The design brief was to bring the, bring the aviation, aviation of the Oris to the next level. We want to check out to check out the boundaries, the boundaries, how far can how far go the new design. design. So after so the after crown, the, really the heritage piece, and after that the Pro Pilot. We are coming with the Pro Pilot X, which is really the most uh, modern way to show an aviation watch. Everything must work together, of course. You have to take care of the technical feasibility and it's also special that you have different layers. You need much more time because you have all these little parts you design and all these are visible. So it takes a lot of designing work to bring all these together. There were a So that was a a video about our ProPilot X. So ProPilot X uh, caliber 115 was launched last fall in September. Um, it is the next in our iteration of own in-house movement. Um, in 2014, uh, we came out with the caliber 110, which was our first in-house movement in 35 years since, um, since 1982. So um, we came out with that, excuse me, we, not since 1982. We came out with that piece, it was um, in 2014. And it represented the first watch, again, the first uh, in-house movement in 35 years. So, and we've seen caliber 110, 111, 112. So the 111 that I showed you, um, this was a piece. So the caliber 110 was a limited edition piece, had no date. The Caliber 111 added a date, um, which you can see, and there's a sport version and there's also a dress version of it. Um, and then there was Caliber 112, which has a day-night indicator, um, second time zone to it. Um, caliber 113 was a um, business calendar, so week, week numbers, day, day, month, and week numbers. And then Caliber 114 was a, a sport version, which is um, and a half hour GMT was a complication. They all feature a 10 day power reserve um, with a non-linear power reserve indicator. They're manual wind pieces and they're on a single barrel mainspring. So the caliber 115, which I have here, which you just saw, it's fully titanium. It's a full skeleton watch. Um, as Lucas was saying, they designed it. It was designed from scratch. So it wasn't, it wasn't, taking a movement and skeletonizing it. It was basically developing a case and developing a movement for the case and vice versa case for the movement. And this was developed as a full skeleton and to really see it in person and to really kind of get a feel for it. It's a beautiful piece. And the more time you spend with it, the more you appreciate it, if you can see that. So 
with the single barrel, you can wind up the mainspring, the nonlinear power reserve indicator. So what the nonlinear reserve indicator does is as, as you get down in time, because if you have eight days or nine days of power, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter to you per se. But if you have, if you're getting down into the bottom part of the register and you want to know, do I have two hours left? Do I have four hours left? Do I have eight hours left? So it, it spreads uh, bigger as it gets to the bottom. So that's what um, that's what we have. But the watch itself will actually last for 12 days. So it's a um, on that mainspring, but we take the best 10. And then there's actually a gear there that regulates keeping the indicator stopped and keeping the watch moving. So this was a really a feat of engineering. It's titanium. Um, it has this really cool bracelet to it as well, this clasp on it. And it's, uh, it's really a, a beautiful piece. So, um, and if you guys remember, um, if you've seen, we had the virtual reality experience with this watch last year when we launched it. So that was really neat being able to go inside of the watch, have the, the uh, VR goggles on. So people really enjoyed that. So that's the, that's sort of a synopsis of all of our own movements. But as I said before, we are, we are, you know, we've been a watchmaker for many years. We've had, uh, we've made a lot of our own calibers. We made a lot of our own movements over time. And now uh, we're back, we're back doing that again. So it's really nice. And the caliber 115, we saw this, you know, while we were someone that really were, you know, we, we benefited a lot from the vintage trend. You know, we kind of, with the Car Bashir and the Diver 65, we feel like we were on the forefront of that at the very beginning. Um, you know, and we've had obviously the Diver 65, the Chronoris reissue, the Pointer reissue. So we feel like the vintage trend has been, has been good, but um, it's also, it's a, it's a trend and it's coming to an end. And this was kind of our answer to what we saw as the next step in what's happening. So um, that's caliber 115 and, and real movements so. there. So I'm a water ambassador and an extreme swimmer, expedition swimmer since 10, 11 years. I swam big expeditions like the greatest lake in Switzerland, I swam to Milano. And also I swam four or five years ago the River Rhine, 1247 kilometers, a journey from the Swiss Alps till the Netherlands. It was a great, great adventure, yes. I'm also a water ambassador and now with my new global water campaign I'm looking for more water ambassadors because one water ambassador is not enough. So I will start with the Lake Baikal because this is the greatest freshwater lake of our planet and so a great symbol to, found, to find new water ambassadors. Swimming in open water is uh, every time dangerous. When I swam the Rhine, you have the currents, you have the huge rocks, you have the ships, you have the industry. So uh, it's a really, really busy river and uh, you could die, I will, I will say, maybe every, every hour. And now when I'm swimming the Lake Baikal, the Lake Baikal is... Uh, uh, it's not a lake, really. It's more an ocean, so you have uh, waves like four or five meters waves. You have uh, cold water, also in high Siberian summer, there are 10, 12 degrees and you are alone there. There is no civilization, so uh, it's a huge challenge next summer. you may know we do a lot of things with uh, water conservation ocean conservation that sort of thing um ernst bromice was a gentleman you just saw he's a swiss swimmer um and he was swimming lake baikal to raise awareness about um about the importance of water and that sort of thing so he um his his goal was to swim lake baikal last summer um it's 880 kilometers long it's a it's a huge lake the it holds 20% of the world's fresh water. 
and um, Ernst, you know, was training to do it. He was going to swim for about six weeks. Um, he made it just about two weeks, and he had to stop his expedition because he had some heart, uh, some health issues that he had to stop, come off the water about. But he was training and training for it. But that kind of that brought our attention to Lake Bacal and kind of what was happening there um, in terms of you know the what it represented. It represented 20% of the drinkable fresh water in the in the world. It's in Siberia. So what we did was we um, we came out with a watch, and we'll I'll show you a little bit more about the Lake Bacal um, when we when we close here. But um, in terms of our initiatives, you know, water is is very much, and conservation is very much something we're all about. We've been making ocean conservation pieces for for over a decade. Um, you know, we 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 think that we've always done it out of who we are as a company. And it's always been something and part of us, as opposed to you know of of recent times, it's it's something that's become you know cool or something that people are doing for marketing reasons, and, and it's it's truly not where we came from. Um, we've been doing this for a long time, whether it's you know reef restoration, whether it's about hammerhead sharks, things like that, uh, source of life, um, which you saw the Rhine River. Um, so we've been doing a lot of that stuff. One of our new pieces in terms of the ocean conservation side of things, to the right there, you see the gold piece. That's the Carries Fort Limited Edition. Um, Carries Fort is a reef track down in Florida. It's part of the Florida Reef Track. It's a project that the Coral Restoration Foundation has been working on for over five years. They've planted over 30,000 corals in that. Um, what you see is a picture of a tree. If you, you look at that, it's sort of like a PVC uh, coral tree. And what the organization does is they grow coral on this tree and they basically move it from the top to the bottom as it grows bigger and bigger. And then they harvest it and they replant it in the coral. So um, if you can see the picture to the left is something before the planting and the picture to the right is replanting and re you know, regenerating coral. So this is all work that's done by hand. Um, we, made a, we made a watch for them. We, we started work with them in 2014. We made a watch with them in 2017. That was the first uh, Staghorn limited edition, if you guys recall that piece. Um, this year, we've launched a second watch with them, a second and third watch, I should say. This is the Carries Fort Gold. Um, the reason why we launched this watch was the product, uh, when we did the last one, they have a fundraising gala every year. And the two pieces that we gave them, the first two pieces, really raised a lot of money for them. So in thinking about a second piece for them, um, we thought about something very auctionable and very unique and very, very rare. So we made a 50 piece limited edition gold and that's the carries fort that you see to the right. Um, there's also going to be a steel piece here as well in the next, um, you'll see that in the next few weeks. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. But uh, it's really, um, it's really a nice piece. They're a good organization. It's a good cause. So certainly. Um, and then getting back to Lake Bacal, that was another piece that we launched this year. Um, most of the pieces that we've done have been around ocean conservation and in sort of warmer water. Lake Bacal is very cold and frozen. And so the, the blue of this is more to represent an ice blue or deep blue like that you see. Um, the dial in pictures doesn't really, the pictures don't really do it justice. Paul, you could probably attest to that if you've seen it in person. It's, it's really a beautiful piece. Um, and so, and then the case back, it actually, it's, it looks like ice. So it, it, it that's what it's meant to symbolize. And um, if you got to look at the case back of the watch. So um, yeah, but the, the next video will kind of take, take you through that. So. So that's the lake. That's the Lake Baikal piece. Um, so, another initiative you guys might be familiar with us from our company is um, we've done some work with the Movember Foundation. So Movember is the 
one of the leading men's health organizations. Obviously, we make a lot of men's watches. Men's health is very important to kind of our consumers and who, whom we are. So we felt um, it a very good fit for us in terms of the organization and what we're doing. So we've made um, we've made three limited editions with Movember, um, and with that, we've raised funds for them as well. Last year, we did a really cool thing with the Red Bar groups throughout the country. We did a Red Bar challenge where we raised some money, um, and we were going to send some people to Basel. Uh, based on that, unfortunately, that didn't happen because of all that's going on. But but certainly, um, this was a great initiative for us. So we've made some really nice limited edition pieces around it with the Movember um, colors and such. You see, the first piece was the Diver 65 to the right. Um, that was the first one. The second one was the pointer that I showed you uh, recently. And then this was the last one that we made. This was the Movember Cronoris from last year. So I don't know if you guys can see that or get that picture, but. Cool piece. It's really nice. It has and it has the symbol, the mustache symbol on the strap. Um, this came in a really nice set. So um, yeah, well received. Really nice piece. And so another thing, you know, we're always trying to raise awareness. And part of, you know, part of why we partner with them is, you know, obviously we we believe in what they're doing. It's very much relevant to us. But also, and they partner with us because we are a worldwide organization as well. We can bring a lot of um, we can bring a lot of exposure to the cause and that sort of thing. And um, one of the really good things that happened last year was um, we had done some work with with the New York Yankees. Um, and in terms of we we did some advertising with the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, um, and ended up that Aaron Boone. Um, he saw our advertisement. Actually, they reached out to us, said Aaron Boone wants to talk to you. So we ended up talking to Aaron Boone and we ended up kind of, um, you know, giving him some product and and he agreed to do some things for us. You know, he obviously is wearing his Oris uh, when he's when he's managing and such. But one of the other things um, that he agreed to do for us was to help us with the Movember campaign. So um, the video you're about to see is is Aaron and kind of talking about that. and. The whole thing of the story, the whole story behind Movember, it's about community. It's about it's about a community of people and people helping other people and really kind of picking people up when they're down and also, you know, kind of getting them through the experience of going through this. And um, so we, we try to take Aaron and we try to kind of put him in a context um, that kind of spoke to that. And that's that's what you're going to see. I'm Aaron Boone, manager of the New York Yankees, New York Yankees. and we're here we're at Yankee Stadium, the scene of the, the scene of the historic games, and home, and home to many legendary players. players. We feel like we feel at Yankee like Stadium, it. we have one of the great home field advantages in all of Major League Baseball. Our fans are knowledgeable, our fans are passionate, I would say to a man, our guys absolutely feed off the energy of our fan base. And anytime we're playing in a tight game, a big game, you can sense it being here at Yankee Stadium. To see this crowd get behind us means a lot to everyone and I think definitely serves as a home field advantage for us. One of the things you think of when you think of the Yankees is the hat. Whether you're walking down the street here in the Bronx, whether you're in Manhattan, whether you're almost anywhere in the country, or for that matter, outside the country, chances are you're gonna run across somebody that's wearing this iconic hat. To be a part of that in the community and to see it, it makes you proud. Culture to me is so important and part of that is a brotherhood and I think it can look a lot of different ways. Some of the best clubs I've played on, the culture was strong because everyone was just so supportive of one another, had each other's backs, got along, interacted very well. There's been teams I've been on that um, I felt like had a great culture that maybe not everyone necessarily got along a little bit. There was a little bit of angst. 
but in the end, kind of all pulling the same way and have this same drive and mission to go out there and be the best team we can be. So I absolutely believe a strong culture um, shows up and wins over the course of a long season. One of the challenges we face as a club this year with the Yankees is we've had a lot of guys fall to injury. So it's been one of our challenges that we've had to deal with. One of the inevitable adversities that I know we're going to face as a, as a club and I feel like we've handled it really well. Be having a great season right now because so many different people have stepped up in the face of, of different health challenges that we've had. Struggles are part of Major League Baseball and success, failure, adversity is inevitable in our game. And I think one of the prerequisites for being successful as a major leaguer is you've got to be able to deal with those things and really on a daily basis. The really good teams not only have a foundation of leadership, but help establish a culture where guys can't wait to get here, to work on it, to improve on it. And we all play a role in that and kind of supporting one another so that we're able to get the most out of each and every guy. And we all have a hand in that. The truth is we're nothing without the hand that lifts us up in baseball and in life. So we all have to continue offering this helping hand when we can, or ask for it when we need it, whether we are the New York Yankees, or me, or you. that raised a lot of awareness for what was happening. Um, I just like, you know, I'd like to talk to you just a little about a couple of things we've been doing now um, during the current COVID situation and kind of some of the initiatives we've taken or things, things that we've done. Um, many of you might've seen the Oris bear here. Um, you know, the Oris bear is always a, uh, a really good vehicle and everybody loves the bear and, you know, he shows up in a lot of different places. So, we, we took a little bit of a fun take to him during this and tried to kind of bring the messaging across with inactivate the bear and kind of, you know, in all the different ways that, that people should, things people are doing and their home and what they're doing and washing hands and all that stuff. So the bear has been really good, but the major initiative we launched was a program called local heroes. So, um, we said to ourselves, you know, what can we do as an organization during this time? Like we're not the ones we can't make hand sanitizer. We can't do things like that. We can't turn our production lines around to do those sort of things. So we decided that we would basically have this local heroes campaign. And it's a, it was a worldwide campaign where we basically asked people to nominate their local heroes um, for the things that they were doing. And, you know, it, yes, it was certainly a lot of the first responders and people kind of on the front lines of it, but it was also people like, you know, the baker and the and the per, the postman and teachers and things like that. So we had an overwhelming response. Uh, we were going to start the program for ten watches, and we ended up we ended up giving fifty watches out to different people throughout the world and kind of recognizing them. And if you go on the Oris website, you see um, you'll see the whole program and you'll see the the winners of it. But we really, um, yeah, it was really a good thing. And I, I think it brought a lot of, um, you know, it brought a lot of really good, good attention to these people that are doing really good work and, uh, and from there. So, um, you know, we were very happy with that. I think people, people recognize that it was a really good thing and, and we had a lot of response to that. So that was good. Um, and then finally, the last thing we did was, um, during this time, we actually we had our first virtual launch of a product. So um, on April 24th, we we launched a piece uh, which I'll show you um, called Momentaro, and uh, that was a really that was a really good thing. And um, 
you know, I, I'll show it to you, but go ahead. My name is Katsumane. I'm managing I'm director, managing director of Jeep and Blue Company and development overseas market for Momotaro Jeans. In Japan, people are keen to quality and the details. So our Momotaro production is all original from cotton, yarn, weaving, stitching, and textile and paints. So we got that nine Toyota machines here, and then uh, we weave in those very nice, high-quality vintage denim with these machines. And then it's not existing anymore. So this is very uh, important, and then this machine can make a very nice material. It's naturally hand-touched, so it makes a really great uh, fitting, and then also great fading. We have two paint on the back pockets which is here also on the always watch here it's really symbol of uh, momotaro and then really symbol of japan made our company and then our japanese spirit and craftsmanship and uh, culture is really synchronized with always so this is not only the production this is also uh, spirits behind and then we hope all the people who has a watch enjoy the Japan culture and specialty and high quality craft and I hope people love it. So that is Momentaro. So um, as you heard, Momentaro is a Japanese jeans brand, a high-end um, Japanese denim brand. Um, and really, if you know much about denim, Japan is really one of the meccas of, of denim, of vintage denim. And um, it started you know, after, after the Second World War with American uh, GIs over there with, with jeans and such, and, and really those jeans became very popular, collecting them, doing things like that um, became really popular in such that it created, in the 90s, it created a whole scene of, of Japanese denim and, and such. So they've become really known for that. Um, we saw it as a good collaboration for us in terms of, it's a very similar culture to our company and the way we go about crafting things. It's about a quality product. Um, um, they're, they're, the way they say things, it's quality without compromise and very much the way we approach our, our product and how we make our product. So we thought it really a good fit, a very, um, you know, very fundamental, interesting fit in terms of having something denim. And so this is the watch. It comes in this really cool travel pouch. If you've seen, if you've seen them on our big crowns, but this is, it's in denim. This is made by Momentaro. So it has uh, the battle stripes on it, which is their symbol. And then um, it has the hemline here. This is the hemline in each pair of jeans. They customize it. So, and then it comes also with a, with a card pouch, like a little wallet there. So again, these are all handmade by Bomentaro. And then the watch itself is this piece. So it has, um, let me see if I can get that in a way if the light is good. So it has a really cool green dial to it, like a minty faded green to it. Goes very nicely with the jean strap. Again, Momotaro uh, made the denim, but it's over over a strap. Um, but it's really a cool fit. It will fade, and um, over time. But uh, yeah, it's been really well received. People really love this this watch, and I think the more time I spend with it in person, the more you actually see it and really really wear it and, and see it. It's really, it's really a good piece. So I'm very happy to that. So, and the presentation kit, as you guys have noticed, is really, is really nice and, and something cool. So yeah, it's gotten a lot of nice feedback, some good, some good uh, press write-ups, things like that. People really loved it. So, you know, so yeah, we're looking forward. I see someone's looking forward to the fade. I'm looking forward to that too. I'd like to see how it, how it patinas and, and, and does that. So, and there's a little touch of bronze in it as well. So it should be a very nice, nice thing. So 
Yeah, so that's Momentaro. So that was our first sort of virtual launch of a product, obviously given what we're going through with COVID and such, but it was very successful, worked, worked very well. So we're looking forward to doing more things like this, but this collaboration is very much in, in who we are. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you so much, VJ. That actually, everything was beautiful and I'm loving that Montaro piece, that the Montaro is gorgeous. Uh, we are gonna jump now into our Q&A portion. We've got about, just about 15 minutes left here on the webinar. Uh, so our first question we have, um, BJ, Oris is perceived as being a brand that's really close to collector's community. Why do you think that is? Um, I mean, I think, you know, we, we have a very, um, you know, we kind of really, you guys, collectors appreciate our product. It's always been something that's been very well, you know, you appreciate a nice mechanical watch. And we've always, you know, liked to talk to people. Like one of our major things is we love to hear feedback. We love to take suggestions. We love to get out and see people, you know, we're very active, like with, with Red Bar, for example, and, and your, the watch groups and kind of getting out there and kind of showing off the product because it's nice, you know, kind of get close to the consumer and kind of understand what they like about it, what they don't. And I think we really kind of, um, and it's really just about being approachable. I think we've been a brand that's been, you know, we always just try to act as we are as people and, and just get out there and, and, you know, accessible and really, you know, take things and not, not take ourselves too seriously and just be out there and be able to, um, you know, kind of interact. And so I think that's really people, people recognize that and appreciate that. And I think that's one of the things that we've, uh, you know, we've done well over time and, 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 and done nicely with. most brands i really feel like oris comes off as a really authentic company in many ways and for that reason especially with your uh, the charitable donations you guys do water cleanups it's fantastic work thank you guys um before we go on to the next one i do want to remind everybody uh by scrolling down there is also a poll section so be sure to fill out those polls and check them out we'd love to hear your input and see what you guys like the most about the pieces uh that were shown today um our next question comes from gene uh, when it comes to dials, does Oris manufacture, paint, print, and apply all of its own in-house? And are the hands also produced in-house or are they all outsourced? Um, we use our suppliers. I mean, we use, we don't do everything in-house with regard to the hands and the dials. Um, but we, you know, we do like most in terms of having suppliers around that do it, work closely with them. Um, with our in-house pieces, um, again, same of the components, a lot of the high-end uh, Swiss micro mechanics companies are making our components much like they're making for other brands and things. So, you know, if you know much about the industry, it's very much a cottage industry in, in, in a lot of senses. So certainly, but we don't make, we do not make everything in-house, but we, we certainly are, we are Swiss in kind of what we do. Any adapters for a NATO strap to be used on the Aqua series? Um, I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised with. Um, we are working on some things for Aquas. Um, I think with our some of our new product this year that you'll see you'll see some um, some good things with regard to that. I know that. Um, the integrated strap is certainly something that some people love and some people are like, oh, I wish it didn't have an integrated strap and, and, but they love the way it wears with that strap and et cetera. So, but we, we have some things coming on that. I can't necessarily go all the way into it, but I think there'll be some nice, uh, some nice uh, changes there. So. Good ask, uh, I'm impressed with your support of Red Bar and the decision to not utilize celebrity ambassadors. Uh, what is the warranty and under what circumstances would the watch need to be returned for a factory servicing? So, um, you know, with anything with, with factory service, our, warrant, our standard warranty is actually a two-year warranty. 
Um, we have a program called My Oris. So if you actually register to My Oris and you register your watch, you will get a third year warranty. So in essence, it's a three year warranty. Um, you know, with service, it's always something that, you know, we, we take into account the situation if it's something that's not straightforward, if there's something obviously wear and tear, normal wear and tear, straps, things like that. Certainly not something that's normally covered under warranty, but, you know, we certainly, we err more, we always err to the side of the customer, I think more than most brands, I think, or not, I shouldn't say more than most brands, but we always err to the side of the customer and try to take the best possible approach to it. Um, if the situation, you know, in, in a fair way. So um, if that makes sense, I hope that answers the question. Uh, I'd like to know if you can talk a little more about the Clean Ocean Initiative project. Sure. Um, Clean Ocean was a, a watch we launched last year. Um, it was sold by itself singly and then it was sold in our in our set in our ocean trilogy set which included a great barrier reef the clean ocean and the blue whale um it's a project we worked with an organization called pacific garbage screening um and they developed a prototype machine which basically cleans microplastics out of the ocean so basically it will filter the water for the microplastics and then it takes that plastic and then as a symbol of that or kind of taking something with that we thought that the result of those collections is is PET plastic, and if you've ever seen it, it's multicolored. It has it, every piece is different, but it's you know recycled ocean plastic and into this um, into these you know nice sheets and whatever. So we we made a disc for each watch, so each watch was unique in its own way because it had a unique disc of plastic to it, ocean plastic, and we thought it would basically by putting that in there, it symbolized that something that recycled nature of that could become beautiful again, garbage could become beautiful again. And, um, you know, we work with that organization. Uh, Marcella Hench was, is the CEO of that organization and they, they've done some good work. So we always, with regard to that clean ocean project and just projects in general and collaborations, we always try to find um, really grassroots organizations, grassroots organizations that we can really help by bringing our, sort of worldwide um, PR to them, bringing worldwide attention to their causes and really making a difference for them. So that's, that's kind of how we go about those projects. So. Fantastic. And I think I can speak for most of the people in Arizona. If you guys ever want to do a Tempe Town Lake cleanup project, we would love it. And we can definitely use it down here. So um, our okay. next question we have uh, comes in from Noah. Uh, can you explain the history behind the Jazz Special Editions? Sure. Um, I think, you know, we, we've made jazz pieces for a long time. Um, and I think, you know, it's before my time in terms of the actual start of the, pro you know, working on jazz pieces. But um, I think it's more about the craft side of it. You know, certainly some jazz fans in our organization. I know Ulrich Herzog, our executive chairman, was a big fan of jazz. And I think, you know, that certainly is something that we've always, you know, um, it's always if we like it, we do it kind of thing. So we always have projects like that. So I think it was personal in that sense. But it was also about the craftsmanship of, you know, the way jazz is played, the, the musical kind of um, talent that goes into it and how it works and kind of making something like that. Um, so we decided and and really telling the story of these artists, which, you know, maybe aren't the most well-known mainstream kind of people. And it's really kind of honoring them and telling the story and making things again, approaching it in a subtle way and bringing out a nice product that tells the story and helping their foundations and whatever, whatever they do. So usually when we do a project like that, um, money goes to their foundation that they have. And, they, you know, each, each family usually has a foundation for them. Well, so that answers Rob you all K, the way. Uh, but, regarding the Hodinkee X Oris L. Uh, a lot of people missed out on it, but he thinks it was one of the best Diver 65 releases uh, released by Oris. Will you guys ever be doing another run? Um, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Um, in terms of doing doing these kind of things, yes, it was a very successful collaboration. 
Um, it was something that certainly, you know, uh, a lot of the Diver 65 collaborations seem to be, you know, they seem to be fan favorites. That one in particular, certainly. Um, yeah, we're always up for, you know, talking about things. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw another collaboration. I'm not saying there's something happening. I'm just, you know, but it's not, you know, we've, we've done multiple limited editions for different things and, and such. So, um, yeah. Uh, we've got enough time for about one more question here. Uh, so, uh, Joel Goodman would like you to answer or know, uh, what is a half hour GMT? A half hour GMT is, um, there's not, there's really not a lot of them available, but there's certain countries in the world that are in half time zones. So in Australia, um, I believe Sri Lanka, and parts of Canada um, have half time zones. So it's useful in those places. Even Australia, I believe, has 15 minute time zones. But um, so, you know, in a normal GMT, you can't necessarily use them in that, in that, in that way. So this, this certainly helps do that. So yes, India and Iran too, that is, that is good. So, yeah. Perfect, thank you so much. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you so much, BJ, for taking your time with us today. It's, it's certainly a pleasure having you here with us today. Um, thank you for having me. And thank you guys for your attention. If you guys would like any more information on the timepieces that you've seen today, please find us online at HydeParkJewelers.com. Uh, we also have uh, an Instagram handle at Hyde Park Watch on Instagram. So please check us out and find us on there as well. Uh, and please, thank you guys again. Until the next time, thank you.